Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Richard. And uh, yes, I'm definitely among very many good, trusted uh, landlords, as Richard also mentioned, but also customers, and then of course, Jones Lang LaSalle that have found many, many of our locations. Good. Now, uh, I think that most uh, of the presenters today have directly or indirectly uh, refer to the way that uh, we work today and how it is affecting uh, the real estate sector, the commercial real estate sector. And that is very much what I'm going to be focusing on. Okay, we refer to it as a, as a global workspace revolution. And um, it is really a revolution and it is a global trend that we see people working uh, differently, they work more flexibly, they are much more mobile. And of course the Philippines is no exception to that, but I will still claim that the, really <laughs> the Philippines is much more ahead of the game there than any other country that I can think of. The main reason is, of course, which way should I point with this one? Um, there. We all talk about location, 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 and I would like to say location, location, transportation, because in this country we are literally stuck between point A and point B. Uh, and we are losing a lot of productivity that way. So uh, what that means is that uh, we end up at coffee shops or other strange places uh, where we try to go online, because uh, sure we have the... Uh, the the uh, devices to do so, um, but if you have a meeting at uh, 3 o'clock or you're done with a meeting at 3 o'clock in, say, uh, Eastwood and your traditional office place is in Ortigas and your home is in Antipolo, it's too early to go home, it's too cumbersome to go to your traditional workplace, so what do you do? You end up in a Starbucks or a coffee shop in general. So uh, what we basically would like to offer that is that uh, anywhere between home and traditional traditional workplace and even as a traditional workplace or at home that we have workspace solutions for you all the way through uh, any point basically. And then of course we have the millennials. I think Charlie was very good at referring to the millennials and the way they work and if we don't uh, follow their way of working and their expectations we won't even be able to attract them and hire them and even if we manage to hire them we are not going to manage uh, to retain them. Uh, they want to work whenever and wherever that it suits them. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm delighted about it because finally there is a generation that I have something in common with because I've always been blamed for working too much and uh, also on Saturdays and Sundays and that is exactly what they are doing. They want to be measured by their results. They don't want to uh, be measured by a timesheet. They don't want to be measured by an old grumpy office manager whether or not he can spot them outside his office or not, or their attire, simply results. And by the way, they are extremely successful. They are by far surpassed the generation Y. Uh, and they're still young, obviously. 10 years from now, unfortunately, I will also be 10 years older, but so will they, which means that they will have entered the generation of decision makers and flexible working is really something that we will see much more being, de being developed. And our company is almost 30 years old and uh, one time, uh, first time I moved from the Philippines, that was in the mid 90s, I came here in 92 by the way, but I moved to Singapore to set up a regional head office where so I, I went to Regis and within one week I was totally up and running, plug and play, the only thing I had to wait for that was basically my filing cabinet. If you remember, we were all sitting there hawking our filing cabinets because that was where we had all our contracts, all of the core data. It was very difficult to do anything without just referring to something you pulled out of there first. We don't even have that problem any longer because with the devices that we can have in our pockets, we can actually access all the information up in the cloud. So today, just a few statistical data. 1.3 billion workers are working flexibly. That basically is more than one out of three. The notion of working, uh, well, we should say eight to six from a traditional uh, workspace, that is basically dead. And there was a statement made in a Forbes magazine not so long ago, and Forbes was also been back here in the Philippines and repeated some of the very same. And then, interestingly enough, I mean, we're all sitting here now, so the question is, who is sitting at our desks, right? 
A traditional workstation is basically vacant, empty, 55% of the time. That's extremely poor utilization of an asset. And if we are talking about utilization of assets, if I say Uber, Airbnb, the shared economy, that is exactly what the trend is about today. And that's another trend, just like the millennials. It is not just a flu, we will see more and more of it. And in that regard, Regis is very much part of that trend. We offer co-working in business lounges. We have all types of shared spaces. If you go to our very first center here in the Philippines, it was opened in 1999 in the Enterprise Center. Now we also have a business lounge there. But uh, if you take a tour of the radius and uh, you go to newer and newer centers, you will also see that the shared space becomes bigger and bigger. And uh, what all the customers or members have in common is that, as Richard showed, they have that gold card up there. And the gold card is literally a key in your pocket for 3,000 locations worldwide. So you can always drop into a Regis location near you. And should you, and which is obviously uh, a very professional working environment, and should you not uh, uh, find a Regis just around the corner uh, and you end up at the more traditional coffee shop, well, this also gives you access to 18 million um, uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, including Starbucks, for example. So we make sure that you can be productive pretty much anywhere, anytime, um, uh, wherever you are. We are growing rapidly, and we are right now in um, 120 countries, 900 cities, 3,000 locations, and still we feel that we are just like scratching the surface. Um, last year we grew with 500 locations, just over 500 locations, and it sounds like a lot uh, when you go to go from two and a half to 3,000 for a company that has already been in business for almost 30 years, and we're already more than 20 times bigger than number two in the marketplace. However, we believe that in order to get the, the network that we would like to offer, we should be at about approximately 20,000 locations. And that is not just something that I'm saying here. Our founding CEO, Mark Dixon, said it last year to the shareholders also. So there's a very big commitment from our side. So uh, th this development will also continue very much so here in the Philippines. And uh, our developments are therefore also taking place not only within Metro Manila, but we're also very much uh, the first uh, within our industry anyway to uh, go into the uh, tier two cities. That went a little bit fast. Here we go. So, yes, we are absolutely uh, developing um, our most recent center uh, in April. Uh, we took over the uh, business center of Ascot within the Ascot uh, uh, on Ayala Avenue, Glorietta 4. Or, yeah, the quad as it was called in the good old days. Um, it is 2,100 square meters and we will have more than 300 workstations there plus a lot of shared uh, space. Uh, but we also looking to the tier two cities. I mean, we have more than 20 locations now uh, in Metro Manila. Uh, of course, many of them are along ITSA um, because that's also where you find, for example, 85% of the retail. Uh, so it starts down by uh, mall of Asia, where we have one ecom, five ecom, and then all all the way up. But we're also in Alabang, and we're also in the old old Manila. Uh, but uh, we need to be many other places, the tier two cities, and uh, we have just opened our very first center in um, in Clark. And we're looking for a second center there. We just opened our second center in Cebu. Uh, and I will get back to where we are going to open our next center because that's the next slide. But otherwise, in general, uh, just this year alone, uh, I have been uh, visiting uh, and very active in pursuing together with Jones Lang LaSalle locations in, believe it or not, Sambuanga. I mean, it's the fourth largest city in the country. Uh, in General Centers, in Davao, in Caca and Oro, Bacolod, Iloilo, 
in uh, within Visayas, uh, yeah, there was Bacola de Iluilu, and then uh, here in uh, in Luzon, South Luzon, it would be Naga, uh, and uh, in uh, North Luzon, in addition to Clark, uh, it would be uh, Subic and Baguio. And I really would like to see us to be every single place uh, of those and uh, with several locations uh, eventually at uh, all of those, loca uh, those places as well. And Davao is our next center. Well, that is in two weeks we're opening center number 24, which is in McKinley. And then this will become center number 25. Uh, and that is, uh, that will be our biggest center in the country. Uh, three, more than 350 workstations. And we will open it the same month as the new president takes office. So uh, president-elect Duterte could not have timed it any better. Um, and the, the interest is tremendous. And what is it exactly that we are bringing to Davao? I mean, we are bringing in a platform on which new investors can come in easily, no long-term liabilities, uh, no capital investments. They can register their business easily. And then from there, they can test the waters and decide uh, uh, what their needs are going to be. Uh, and eventually, they might or might not want to go into uh, conventional space. At the same time, we are basically offering the local companies to get a professional platform easily. Again, no long-term liability, no capital investment. And because of that gold card that Richard was showing, then they actually have a professional platform uh, facilities available to them, uh, more than 20 locations in Metro Manila, 3,000 locations worldwide. I'm from Denmark, we even have a lounge, Regis Lounge in Copenhagen Airport, uh, London, uh, we are in, uh, in Heathrow. So um, there are uh, really a lot of uh, possibilities. And if you wonder what kind of customers we have, I mean, we have like, <laughs> All types. I mean, it could be a small startup who would like to have a very professional address. Let's say it is two paralegal uh, people and they start a consultancy firm and they would like to have the best address possible. So uh, in Makati, so they take Zulik. We have a very big center in the Zulik building. But uh, they take zero square meters. They just become a virtual office customer because they cannot afford to sit there behind the desk. Not because the desk is expensive, but because they have to be out there chasing their first customers, correct? And then later on, as they gain more traction, then they might also take office space. But for, for now, as they are starting up, they basically have a business card with a very, very excellent address. They have their business registered at the address. They can host meetings in the boardroom in Zulik uh, when they want to. We will answer their phones and receive their emails, etc. And I'm not claiming that we will secure their success, but I guarantee you, and I see it all the time, um, they definitely get more customers because of that address. They also get better customers faster and customers who actually more than likely will pay more than if they had a home address in a condo because that was all what they, and actually what they in reality are doing in the beginning. Then you also have like customers who are Existing businesses, uh, I had one, uh, I love this story actually, uh, I used to run around in the barangays in Carlo Ocan when I was setting up distribution for Philip Morris back in 92. Um, and there was this little travel agent in, in Carlo Ocan and he came to me and he said, Lars, you know, we would really like to cater to those big corporate head offices in Makati, but boy, it's difficult with an address in Carlo Ocan. So he took a very small office with us in uh, one of our centers in one of the nice office towers in Makati, perfect address. And he was literally, literally at eye level with his target customer. So very quickly he started, business was really picking up. And every so often they would send over somebody to pick up some travel documents or a ticket. And they would just quickly look around and like, wow, business must be really good because they can't really see whether he just have a small office uh, internally or whether he has the whole floor. 
And his business went incredibly well, incredibly fast, and eventually he took his own conventional space, uh, but I guarantee you guys that he left in a much bigger car than uh, the day he arrived, and this all took place within just one year. And that's beautiful to see, and of course it's great to be in a line of business uh, where you actually see that you are facilitating and uh, help helping businesses. Uh, a very good case study on, on that account is because we also have the very biggest, um, about half of the Fortune 500 companies are always, one, uh, are always our customers somewhere in the world. Twitter is a good example. Twitter is barely 10 years old and they are in 65 countries. And successful, obviously. We all know them. They made a strategic decision very early on. It was whatever, whenever we point at a new country on the uh, world map, we call regions. And imagine if they had not done that going into 65 countries. I mean, we all know here, regardless how long time we've been here or born and raised here, how difficult it is to deal with the, sorry, uh, developers, but uh, to deal with the landlords, to deal with the phone companies, uh, I mean, connectivity and so on. I mean, it is really, really tough. So uh, it is truly a shortcut. And also for local companies here, it is very important that if you can find a shortcut, you will avail of it. The Philippines is number 104, 105 in the world in terms of ease of, do ease of doing business. Uh, so if you can find a shortcut, of course you are going to avail of that too. Um, and uh, obviously, I strongly feel that we are providing uh, that as well. So uh, let me just uh, wrap up by giving you a little bit of an ocular tour de regis, because now I've been talking about uh, office space, but I'm talking also been talking about the network and the uh, co-working. And uh, yes, we have the co-working. We also have the executive's office suites. We have big team rooms, whatever it is that you need. My goodness, that goes fast sometimes. Here. This is the only picture you will see that uh, is not taken in the Philippines, but I'm just showing it because that is uh, what it will look like uh, when I'm done renovating the seventh floor uh, inside Ascot. Uh, there will be, uh, again, even more space than we are used to for a, sh a shared space. And uh, this is the exact layout that there will be in the pantry area. Uh, but, of course, there will also be the uh, more, for us, traditional business lounge. These are the think pots uh, that we have, we have designed everything ourselves, even our paint, paint trees. And these think pots uh, is, I mean, you can just drop in if you have the gold card, you are a member. So you just check in and you, you won't be charged anything and you just go and uh, you, you, you uh, drop, sit in a think pot and you avail of free flowing coffee, you go uh, online uh, and uh, you can see them be, be productive that way. And let me just back up a little bit and talk about the flexible working because flexible working, what I also like about it besides the fact that it is the millennials who are absolutely I'm crazy about, it is a grassroots movement. It is really the employees who wants flexible working. The number one annoyance about, going, about working is actually going to and from the workplace. Number one reason for resigning in the Philippines is my employer was not flexible enough. Now, uh, if now the, uh, uh, the, the employers are, going, are, are catching up, but it is still a pull effect, grassroots effect from the users, the, the employees. But now I meet more and more HR managers who are like, like looking very like sharp and last, we are also embracing flexible working now. Fantastic. And then I asked them, because I can't help teasing them a little bit, okay, so tell me, how do you manage a manager working remotely? And they generally have no clue. It is difficult. I mean, yes, you have to measure them only by their results. But you also have to accept the fact that they more than likely are going to pick up children from school during traditional business hours, etc. And you have to accept that. On the other hand, you should also basically demand, expect from these managers 
flexible working employees that they are checking their emails in the evenings and uh, on the weekends, etc. Because that is what flexible working is very much about too. Just ask the millennials, right? But in order to make all of us feel a little bit better about it, then uh, as the em uh, employer, if you give them the, the membership, the access to the Regis places, I can still tell you at the end of the month who went to which center, at what time, and how, how long time did they stay. So you will still get that sort of like monitoring tool, which you do not have if they only can access coffee shops and you don't even know whether or not they do it or whether they stay home and if they do it to what degree is it really just a social event anyway so i do give you a tool where you uh, if you're a little bit more mature like myself uh, get that uh, nice warm fuzzy feeling that i do control them a little bit after all uh, while at the same time accommodating exactly what they want i.e working flexibly this is um, a typical reception, that's pretty much what they all look at the moment. So uh, again, it should give you a nice uh, warm feeling that uh, this is uh, like almost like a five-star hotel at Marco Polo and we are also in that building as you heard. By the way, um, it is very modern, all of it uh, with open ceilings. We don't want to have high counters like an old uh, bank or a post office. Um, and uh, the pantries, everything uh, is pretty modern and uh, everybody can go and access a network. Uh, and that was basically it. So um, yeah, but uh, thank you very much and uh, there is time for questions later because I'm part of the panel. Thank you.